Buzz Radio because it's all vision in the studio with the Outer Vital Steel Pulse. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mom. Hi. Hello, Mom. <laughs> Crazy. So, um, in Disney, it's so nice to have you back in San Diego again and to pour the um, concert that we're having at the Starlight Bowl. You've been everywhere. You've been to Hawaii. Just came from Tucson. How was LA? Did uh, any, any of the indigenous people come out? Any, I think they're all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 man. Hawaii was brilliant. Like, Hawaii is a place that we have to return to. For yeah. sure. And yeah, man, it was amazing. What did you play in Hawaii? Uh, it's full round. Right before round. Really? Waikiki? Yeah, Hawaii. 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 You know, something I've always wanted to ask is, uh, when you travel between the islands, is it by a shuttle airplane, a major airlines, or what? It, how, do you, how do you? How did you get? Well, that being as we're just musicians, we just go and they tell us. To go. <laughs> did you fly? Yeah, we did fly. 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 We did so Kauai, that's my island, the Golden Island. Mm, our island. <laughs> our island. We put a claim on it. Wow. So it belongs to us now. <laughs> so everybody came out. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice. Young people, yeah. um, all ages, yeah. our generation. Yeah, some people came with their folks and yeah. their parents and stuff. Because we didn't know the band was so popular down there. Yeah. Uh, when we got yeah, to the You guys are universally known now. Wow, yeah. <laughs> New Zealand, yeah, everywhere yeah, I yeah, went yeah. in the South Pacific, you're yeah. very popular. Mm -hmm. And when you start going to New Zealand and Australia, you're going to really have a big surprise because all the indigenous people, yeah. Fiji, still post was one, and Balmari was a favorite. Uh, New Zealand, still post again with the Maoris, the indigenous people. They all love still post. Also, uh, when I went to Australia, that was very popular. All the original people yeah, wanted to still right. So you have a great, great uh, number of fans in the South Pacific. That's so that's mm -hmm. nice to know. We were all those places. We were looking forward to going to those places. Yeah. Did you uh, did you get any time off there? We were talking earlier about the busier you are nowadays, the less time, time you off. Well, we had a couple of days off on Kauai when we mm -hmm. first got there. Yeah, yeah, but we just soon came to an end, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it's <laughs> also like it's just, you know, <laughs> that was straight, it's yeah. straight to the next place. Yeah. You know? What about Tucson? I hear that a lot of Native American Indians are yeah. into reggae music. Oh yeah, yeah. Every time we play in Arizona, we get a lot of all the Hopi Indians and the tribes that are there that comes out to the gigs. Lots of them. Yeah, because we're all well into into reggae. And every time they come, they bring something as a gift, whether it's an armband, a necklace, or whatever. Like small gift show the appreciation for the man. band or for the members of the band. Every time. Can I ask you, uh, how did Steel Pulse come about? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, the original Steel Pulse is mostly friends, just schoolmates. Mm -hmm. Most of us have left school, gone to various jobs, some, some of us have gone to art colleges and stuff like that. And um, we were just he uh, hearing some different music and reggae music, like uh, Catch a Fire and Burning Notes, uh, Black Heart Man, uh, Marcus Garvey album. Albums like that influenced us to, to want to start to play music. And one, and one day between David and, and Ronnie, and Basil and some of the original members, they just decided, decided they wanted to form a form band that could make music, that could inspire people the same way this music was inspiring us. You know, so none of us couldn't play, but we just wanted to play, so we had to teach each other. Mm -hmm. And Stephen Fonso came a couple of years after that, and mm -hmm. since then the four of us been together about 11, 12 years. Did you, uh, were you already playing in a group before? Uh, yeah, I was with uh, a funk band. Mm, before that, before that, I was with a rock band. A rock band. Yeah. So Where do you see reggae music going now, Steve? Do you? Uh, reggae music to me still has a very, very long way to go because it's going to go far. Reggae music is going to be big. Mm. I feel and I know that it's going to be bigger, a lot bigger than what it is now. Because demands there. Yeah. Because the demands there, the public's behind reggae music now, but it, it's just a matter of getting.
proper organization, getting reggae out across on the TV, the radio stations, you know, getting it out to the people. Yeah, There's still a right. mass of people out there that hasn't been exposed to reggae. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you mean by big? I, I know, I, I have an idea what you, what do you, what okay. you in the mainstream of American music? Or okay. mainstream of For instance, uh, you know, it, it is a lot of sort of, um, big, yeah. It's in, uh, it's in America, it's worldwide, it, you know, get, get up, you know, like MTV oh, yeah. and, well, and, and mm -hmm. something like that. You know, the mainstream people are playing the, all the rap music and the pop music. Uh, reggae music is selling just as much. Yeah, uh, maybe more. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Maybe more. But, but the shops, they get their, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, the shops, they get their, their, their research and their files from and their charts from. Yeah, it's, all, it's only special in shops, yeah. but, but if I was to check the reggae shops as well, I can guarantee you that uh, um, you know in the top of, in in the top 100, you'd, you, you know you'd have at least say 15, <coughs> 20, you know 20 reggae records there mm. on a steady basis. Yeah, you know I mean things like that. Well, I think a lot of people who are in the, the position like the big companies. Are, they don't realize how much reggae sells. You know, they don't know because they've never ventured into that market. Mm -hmm. and so, so, um, so we can have tower, just like there's tower records, yeah. warehouse. Yeah. We can have reggae record stores. If there were small record stores yeah. and outlets, on the same, on level, the same yeah. level. That's what yeah. I feel yeah. too. It is, you know what I mean? Because a lot of those are what they call the back street shops. Right. They are the, the, the major. Right. They're the ones who give you the music industry. They don't even the sales of regular records. Those are the ones that people go to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those are the shops that should be a service by the major companies. Right. Because those are the shops that people know. A lot of people, they don't go all the way into town just to go to a Tower Records when they can get it in a small shop. Mm -hmm. It's on like Tower Records is one of the under chart list. So when you'd sell 500 records in one of the small shops and you only sell 10 in the Tower Records shops, that's the difference. That's the, those five hundred are the ones that the people don't know about. You see, and those are the shops that has to be brought out. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the shops that has to be. Let people has to know if you want music, that's where you're gonna go to. You see, and the, the companies are gonna learn to service those shops if they wanna make the amount of money because that's what all it is. They're in it to make money. Uh, they want to make money, so they got to learn to do the thing right. Mm -hmm. a, lot, you know, a, a, lot, a lot of times, uh, it seems they, they run away from reggae, and then when somebody makes a hit or something like that, or, or one of their friends hears about something, then they get into it because mm -hmm. it's like the bandwagon, the same thing David talked about, the reggae bandwagon. You know, it's a serious thing because people won't touch something and until they say, oh, it's taken off, let's jump on it quick, or else we get left behind. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing what's happening, with, with, you know, with reggae music, you know what I mean? You see me, you know, from you know, the grassroots level, yeah. like some of, some of us have you been, know, yeah. and yeah. hold on to it, you That's know? That's And then when it gets to, they wait till it gets to be real popular, like then, UB40 or Then whatever. they jump on the right So once they say that the real money can be made from it, then... Well, they do. You, 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 just, you, you just made a good point there when you said that grassroots level, and a lot of uh, musicians now are, are going, a lot of reggae musicians are um, going to some of these major labels. Uh, is, is reggae becoming more slick now as opposed to, as Mkata says, uh, more grassroots? Well, I wouldn't say it's becoming more slick. I think reggae musicians now are looking for the same deals that the, the rock musicians are getting, the, the funk musicians are getting. Our music sells just as much as they do, maybe you know more than they do. So we want the same deals as well. Yeah. And to get those deals, we have to go up the ladder. Yeah. You know, we have to go to where those deals are made. You know, we can't do it in the little back street shops of the little guys because we've been there for years and years and years and years, and we're still in the same position. Now we want to move on so we can do more for other people that's coming up behind us. Steve, what about record company support? Uh, I, I find with reggae music that it's really hard to get record company su support. Uh, if the other artists, that means, the, I mean, the company would be at Tower and they would say, welcome Steel Pulse, or there would be a sale on Steel Pulse LPs, yeah. or are you getting record company support um, we get better, it's better, isn't it? It's better. It's a lot better for us 
Well, maybe a lot of other reggae bands was out there struggling. That's on, that's on smaller labels because we were the major company. You see, so we would get that bit more of a tour support than they would. But a lot of the, the companies are still afraid to put as much into it as they would another form of music, whereas they know they, they guaranteed that amount because they dealt with that sort of music for so long, so they know how it works. Reggae music is totally new to them, and they're, they're not adventurous enough with it. I think if they were to put as much into it, as they do with the other forms of music, yeah. they will get their just and they'll be surprised. And they'll be very surprised. Very surprised. Yeah, how much they can get There's back a big surprise of waiting for the music business. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can see because of the, you know, in the next set, you know, I mean, we're not just saying so because we are reggae musicians. Yeah, right. We say because we know why we live it. You understand what I'm saying? We've seen it grow. We've been among it for years. We we know it's like you can you can go on the street and say in England. Or even in New York, and there's ten houses on those on that street. None of those houses will have a reggae selection. Not all those houses will have a, a heavy metal selection, or a, a jazz selection, or a funk selection. But every house will have at least a small reggae selection. Mm. That's how much reggae sounds. That's how popular reggae is. Mm -hmm. It just not does, doesn't get the all the, the limelight and the, the glorification that all the like your dance music and your, your jazz and your, you know it doesn't get that much glorification as the other music does. So a lot of people still are not, they don't know about reggae. You know, they hear it, but they still don't know yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. What about, um, <coughs> I know on this, this recent album that you have, Steve Emergency, that uh, there is a, a video on uh, the One Selection reaching out. Uh, uh, there are more projects as far as videos are concerned. And what do you think about uh, more reggae videos? I mean, as far as um, MTV, for example, or VH1 or uh, BET? Well, it's back to the same thing what we were saying. Mm -hmm. If those companies would like, because there are regular videos out there, but nobody sees them. You know, most people will sit and watch TV, and if they don't see it on the TV or they don't hear it on the radio, they don't know. Yeah. You know, so it's up to like those companies to help them. You know, put in a bit more. There should be more shows like yeah. regular coastal television. That's exactly. what we're trying to do here. <laughs> yeah. You know, to really expose uh -huh. it. We yeah. on radio, yeah. and we knew that we, yeah. you know the next advancement would be television to help reggae music. And I'm talking, speaking of uh, reaching out, that was such a surprise to everyone. Uh, I love reaching out, and uh, it's really great. It's I can pop that in the disco. And also, um, you know, the one that uh, David sings, uh, is it Don't Tell Me I'm a Dix? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so that is really hot, you know. A lot of people came around and they said, well, what is this? And I explained, I said, if you can, uh, you, if you listen to the lyrics, mm -hmm. you can understand why he's singing it. And you, it's so beautiful that you, you <laughs> hit a hard funk beat. I mean, it shows me the, the versatility of um, a reggae artist. Mm -hmm. um, Still pops. Oh, well, you see, see a lot of people think because you're a reggae musician, you, you never listen or you never you play else any other like form of music. Uh, what kind of music do you listen to? Uh, oh, <laughs> that's you're so really okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. If you're riding in the car or you're sitting there, uh, 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 what, you know, do you, do you have a, uh, uh, so, 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 like, like, if we're driving, yeah. funk music, like dancing, funk, you know, yeah, so we're driving, yeah. it's ideal. <laughs> Jesse Johnson, <laughs> Prince Michael Jackson, Jackson. Mm -hmm. Lionel Richie, the day everybody you can grow, you can <laughs> dance, you can be listening to. Anything besides that. Yeah. That's, That's what I explained. I, I explained to people, I said, uh, you know, I said, Steve Nesbitt sure. uh, is the hardest. And me too. <laughs> <laughs> I said, he listens to everything. I said, if Steve comes, you know, he wants to know what the latest, you know, funk and everything. And that really got me into being very open-minded about music. And um, all music, you know, is so good. Jazz is for one thing. You know, mm -hmm. Maybe it opens up your mind to, to what other people feel, That's it. what other people think. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes, like, we're in 
we share the same house, we live in the same house. And I've got, we got a, a good record collection. And I'll have some friends will come there and they'll see things from like classical, right back through to jazz and blues. And they'll go, you listen to classical? Mm -hmm. say, yeah. I said, but it's not really. He says, no, but it's music. Oh. I never expected you to be listening. You know, I will really listen to it. And once we, you know, we get into it, we will really listen to anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know that's the way we are. We grew up with music. Music is just music. No matter what form it's in, it's music. Because yeah. somebody's expressing themselves yeah. through it. Yeah. We know whether it's a song with, with no instruments or a song with no, with no lyrics. It's music just, it's just music. an acapella, just strictly it's voices. Something. It's still music. Yeah. You know, we can listen because it's music. It's, there's no instruments in the background. It's just basic acapella. It's music. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just that. How many, how many uh, months out of the year do you stay on the road? Huh. Um, well, this year, you know, this year, like, <laughs> you know, this year has been virtually half. Well, uh, we've been here we've been since May. No, no, no. I took a month off, yeah. and then uh, you know, we're, we're still, we're, we're still in that touring vibe. So it's been, it's, yeah. been, it's been nearly six months now, and mm -hmm. over here, you know, you know, when we go back, we're gonna, we're gonna be we're touring here, the rest of the year. and then we're gonna be touring the rest of Europe. So we'll be gone away from home for a long time. Yeah. When you tour like this, how do you find time to go into the studio and write music? And we, we, we write while we're on the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We try to keep on top of it as we go, you know. Ideas are coming to come all the time. We put it down, you know. Yeah. Sometimes people come to me and say, well, listen to this, what do you think of this? Uh, they probably come, you know. The world has got ideas and then, you know, that's it. And then we just pull it. And as we're going along, we're keeping ourselves conscious of the, you know, you know, the fact that we are going to, you know, make another album mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. So what was the There was there was a little uh, you haven't been to America for about two years. Was it two years of, between albums? So yeah, yeah, and yeah. everyone was just they yeah. were going crazy. You we guys so we, we were missing you too. <laughs> Believe me, we when missed we you. <laughs> when the world took the key away I was like, freedom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like you know it's like what happened is that there was uh, a miscalled uh, a miscalled coordination as far as the time that we toured last and the, the time that the album came out. Mm -hmm. I think what happened is that we toured, then the album came out, and we toured again by the time the album had already circulated. Mm -hmm. So it, it's like a sort of after the fact. But the people still came to see us because we got a strong live following. Right. You see what I'm saying? So so it took us a while. Plus, we're looking for another deal as well. Well, we right deal. Yeah, right. we're working on the record because we're the, we're the lecturer. Now we're with MTA. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, you know, it, 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 we considered. Uh, 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 going to a small label, I can depend on both the situation that we're in and what we wanted to do is best to go with the major. Yeah. 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 Do you have any uh, new projects on the horizons? As far as the new album? New album, uh, new video. Oh yeah, you know, I'm going to a new video. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely a new album in the, you know, yeah. to be worked on. You know, a new video. Are you gonna are you gonna leave one? Everybody's everybody's waiting. Know, everybody's waiting for me. <laughs> this, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a singer, you know. Oh, All right. No, so he says. So, so, so he says. Says, I'm not a drummer. <laughs> 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 but when the time comes, I will try. You know, you stay in the emergency LP. Is there a reason why? You call it, I mean, state of emergency. It's not like still pulses. They are always about message. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, I know that you got into what was going on in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, so can you give me your feelings on that? Oh, someone asked me the same question the other day. And the answer I gave them is, well, sit down, really sit down, and take a look at what's going on around you. The state, the drug situation, all over the world. You got brothers killing brothers, fathers killing sons. I mean, everybody's doing everything in such a crazy way. Mm -hmm. And everybody's saying, yeah, I'm doing it for religion. You know, I mean, if, if you believe in God and you believe in religion, you don't, go, you don't kill people. You don't kill somebody for a piece of land or a piece of a metal or, you know, everybody's 
we're in a mess right now. We have to sit down and take a good look at what's going on around us because we, as the generation that's here, if we can't sort ourselves out to leave something for the generation that's coming behind us, they ain't gonna have nothing, and soon there ain't gonna be none of us left here. You know, it's just gonna be just, it's just one big mess. Yeah, there's a general yeah. lack of concern. Yeah. 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 Amongst people in the world, you know, it's like you, you, the governments will just forget the governments because they ain't doing do anything mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, but about amongst people themselves, you know, who have got the power, you know, to change things, they like to have the power, but they use, but you know, you know, you know, but but they use it, f you know, for worthless things, you know. What I mean? And, and the space we have, to, we have to educate them. You know what I mean? So it's up to us. Yeah, yeah, we have we're to change our level of consciousness and awareness and ring music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, can't, we can't go on living in the same ignorant way. Mm. You know, mm. you know, we have to change and we have to teach the kids that are coming now yeah. what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. You know, the ignorance of what is today. We have to show them and say, look, you can't come along and do that because this is what happened to us when we were doing that. You have to do something different and better.